Hi, and welcome to the first video of this importing data into our course. Imagine this situation. A poor colleague of yours is still doing his or her analyses in SAS, and you want to continue working on the SAS data, but inside R. You need an easy way to convert the SAS data into an R data frame, but you can't seem to find the tools to do so. Well, getting to know these tools is exactly what this course is for. More specifically, we will focus on five types of data. Data from flat files, from Excel files, from other statistical software, from databases, and finally, data imported from the web. Each chapter will focus on each one of these data formats, and you'll learn to convert all of them into an R data frame. In this first chapter, we'll start with flat files. They're typically simple text files that contain table data. Have a look at states.csv, a flat file containing comma-separated values. The data lists basic information on some US states. The first line here gives the names of the different columns or fields. After that, each line is a record and the fields are separated by a comma, hence the name comma separated values. For example, there's a state Hawaii with the capital Honolulu and a total population of 1.42 million. What would that data look like in R? Well, actually, the structure nicely corresponds to an R data frame that ideally looks like this. The rows in the data frame correspond to the records and the columns of the data frame correspond to the fields. The field names are used to name the data frame columns. But how to go from the CSV file to this data frame? We're in luck, because the standard distribution of R provides functionality to import these flat files into R as a data frame. These functions belong to the utils package, that is loaded by default when you start R. The mother of all these data import functions is the read.table function. It can read in any file in table format and create a data frame from it. The number of arguments you can specify for this function is huge, so I won't go through each and every one of these. Instead, let's have a look at the read.table call that imports states.csv and try to understand what happens. The first argument of the read.table function is the path to the file you want to import into R. If the file is in your current working directory, simply passing the file name as a character string works. If your file is located somewhere else, things get tricky. Depending on the platform you're working on, Linux, Microsoft, Mac, whatever, file paths are specified differently. To build a path to a file in a platform-independent way, you can use the file.path function. Suppose our states.csv file is located in the datasets folder of the home directory. You can use file.path like this. Because I'm working on a Mac, this is the resulting path. But for Windows, the resulting character string will be different. This path can now be used inside read.table to point to the correct file, like this. Now for the header argument. If you set this to true, you tell R that the first row of the text file contains the variable names, which is the case here. Read.table sets this argument false by default, which would mean that the first row is already an observation. Next, sep is the argument that specifies how fields in a record are separated. For our CSV file here, the field separator is a comma, so we use a comma inside quotes. Finally, the strings as factors argument is pretty important. It's true by default, which means that columns or variables that are strings are imported into R as factors, the data structure to store categorical variables. In this case, the column containing the country names shouldn't be a factor, so we set strings as factors to false. If we actually run this call now, we indeed get a data frame with five observations and four variables that corresponds nicely to the CSV file we started with. The read.table function works fine, but it's pretty tiring to specify all these arguments every time, right? CSV files are a common and standardized type of flat files. That's why the utils package also provides the read.csv function. This function is a wrapper around the read.table function. This means that read.csv calls read.table behind the scenes but with different default arguments to match with the CSV format. More specifically, the default for header is true and for sep is a comma, so you don't have to manually specify these anymore. This means that this read.table call from before is thus exactly the same as this read.csv call. Apart from CSV files, there are also other types of flat files. Take this tab delimited file, states.txt, with the same data. To import it with read.table, you again have to specify a bunch of arguments. 
This time, you should point to the txt file instead of the csv file, and the sep argument should be set to a tab, so backslash t. You can also use the read.delim function, which again is a wrapper around read.table. The default arguments for header and sep are adapted, among some others. The result of both calls is again a nice translation of the flat file to an art data frame. Now, there's one last thing I want to discuss here. Have a look at this US CSV file and its European counterpart, stateseu.csv. You'll notice that the Europeans use commas for decimal points, while normally one uses a dot. This means that they can't use the comma as the field limiter anymore, they need a semicolon. To deal with this easily, R provides the read.csv2 function. Both the sep argument as the des argument to tell which character is used for decimal points are different. Likewise, for read.delim, you have a read.delim2 alternative. Can you spot the difference again? This time, only the des argument had to change. Let's try to import the stateseu.csv file with the basic read.csv function. R gives a result, but it clearly is not the result we want. It's a dataset with five observations, but a single variable. If you try again with read.csv2, it works perfectly fine this time. Of course, the possibilities of importing flat files with the utils functions are practically endless. You'll typically have to experiment a bit to get it right. Give it a try in the first set of exercises.